Here's some great tips and tricks from 12 Final Cut Pro gurus. Let's dive in. The next thing I want to talk about is the magnetic timeline. In my opinion, the magnetic timeline is absolutely essential, especially when working with really complex projects. Now, the problem that you were having is when you click and drag, these clips are connected, and that is actually a major benefit in the magnetic timeline. But if you want to disable that feature because you want this specific shot to always show up at this moment, you can push the tilde key. If you look at your mouse icon, it's going to give you that little orange icon next to it, and that means that connected clips are disabled. So now if I click and drag this over, you'll notice how these two clips stay exactly in place. So I can move these shots around as much as I need to without them sliding out of place. Another thing you can do is actually change the connection point. So right now it's here at the very beginning. If you push Option and Command and then you click in a separate point of your clip, it's going to move that connection point. So now it's connected to this clip rather than to this clip like it would be normally. You can see there's some dead air here, so what I'll do is I'll hit blade, move the playhead over here, hit option left bracket, just pull it in. Let's say I want this one pulled in. Um, I want to keep all of this part, but I want to lose this, so I'll hit command B, bring this over, and then hit over like there to get that to get that pulled out. So I use this to really fly through. Like I can see like these are multiple takes, let's say just based on the waveform is what I'm judging. So let's say, oh, there's me like scratching my face. Don't do that, coronavirus. So I'm gonna hit command B and then I want all of this gone. So then I hit option left bracket and just bring it all in. I just think that it's a really quick way to fly through a big piece like this where you're you know, you got a big 15 minute long multi-cam and you want to really just hammer through cutting out chunks of it. To help us with matching, we're going to set up a side-by-side -side view with a comparison viewer so we can see both images and their traces in the waveform at the same time. To do this, let's go to Window, Show in Workspace, then Comparison Viewer. This opens a new window to the left of our viewer where our reference image will show. Now the scopes are showing between the viewers, so let's change their position by enabling the vertical layout. Now let's enable the scopes for the comparison viewer and set them to vertical layout too. Now if we needed to compare our shot to the last frame of the outgoing or the first frame of the incoming shot, just make sure that the comparison viewer is set to timeline and click on previous edit or next edit. In this case, we want to use our first frame as a reference. So let's change the comparison viewer to saved mode. Move the timeline playhead to the frame we want as a reference and click save frame. Now if you happen to save several frames, you can open the frame browser to select the right one. Let's close the frame browser and move the playhead back to the third clip. Now that this is set up, we can see both images and their traces at the same time. And this is a 4K clip in a 1080p timeline, so we know we can zoom in 200%. So once again, Shift-C, Ken Burns. This time I'll move towards the end because the car moves and I want to kind of frame it towards the end. And I'll zoom in, again, move towards the end, about like that. Let's reverse that. So we end there. And now as we scrub through the clip, we push in tight to the car. But we have the same problem where it occurs over the entire clip. What if you just wanted to pan into here and freeze? Well, again, you could Command B to blade the clip. You could take the second half of it and go back into Ken Burns and reverse it. And now we pan in. Let's click Done. We pan in and then we pan out. But you can't create a freeze frame here because it's video. But what you can do is blade the clip again, command B right there. And then on this middle portion, if we go back into Ken Burns, we can take this end framing and kind of force it to match the starting framing. And what happens then is we push in. And then when we hit this middle section, we'll freeze on it. And then we can pull out from there. Let's say we wanted to zoom into the canvas here in motion. I'm just going to select my clip, head on over to my video inspector. Let's make a keyframe for scale and position, and then head a little bit further down my timeline, make two more keyframes here and scale up and reposition to where I want my endpoint to be. And I'm actually going to make this a linear move and then head on over here to the save effects preset button in your inspector window and it will ask you which attributes do you want to bring into this new effect. 
you can uncheck or check the ones that you want to apply. And then here's the really important thing. Do you want to maintain the timing or do you want it to stretch to fit? I personally prefer maintaining timing on most of the effects that I create. I don't want them to stretch depending on the length of my clip. I always want them to remain consistent. You want to give your effect a name here. Whatever you put here in this name is going to be whatever the effect is called here in your effects bin. And then under category, that's going to determine where it lives down here in your menu of effects to create a new category. Just hit this drop down and select new category. And then you can type in the name of a new category and it will appear down here in your effects bin. If you're like me and you do a lot of the same moves over and over, or you want to create a custom effect, you know, you want to reach for a lot in the future, whether that be a color grade or some other kind of treatment to a video, this is so helpful. Those are some genius level moves, don't you think? If you're liking this video, will you give it a thumbs up so other people will find it? Thanks, and in just a little bit, I'm gonna show you how you can get some free Final Cut Pro plugins. Press Command and Comma, which brings up your preferences. Go to Playback, and turn this off. Not only will this slow down your computer while you're editing, but it'll also cause your libraries to become absolutely massive in size. And frankly, it's not really needed because Final Cut will just render out your project when you export. Now, if there's a clip that's giving you some issues with playback, what I usually do is select that clip, press the shortcut Control and R. This renders just that specific clip so you can have smoother playback. If you're saying behind your computer right now, but Dylan, my computer is old and it can't handle my new camera's footage. I have to background render. No, you don't. Instead, just make proxy files. Click on the clip or clips in your library that you want to run smoother, right click and hit transcode media. Then hit create proxy media. Generally speaking, creating ProRes proxy files at 50% is gonna offer you better performance while editing compared to editing native camera footage. And it's gonna do a good job at keeping a decent resolution in your viewport. If that confuses you, basically all this does is create temporary files that are easier for FCP to edit. So after it transcodes, you'll go to view and hit proxy only if you created proxy files for all your media. You'll see here that since I didn't create proxy files for the surrounding clips, they're not showing up. Only the transcoded clips are showing up and transcoding them will allow us to edit them easier. All you have to do is switch back to optimized slash original media before you export and you're set. Now, if it's one or a few particular clips that are having trouble, like in this example, make proxies for that clip or clips, and then go to view and hit proxy preferred. I would actually just hit this most of the time instead of proxy only. This will allow you to see both the original media that are not transcoded to proxy and all of the proxy media on the timeline, which is pretty handy. This next shortcut I use a lot. If I've got a couple of clips on my timeline, let's say of me speaking and then a couple of cutaways, and I want to put those cutaways over me speaking, I simply select them and I lift them from my primary storyline using Command, Alt, and the up arrow. You'll see it's in a little group. I can do that again if I want to separate the clips and move them individually. You can also overwrite these clips to your primary storyline by hitting Command, Alt, down. You'll see you won't lose your audio, but your edit will look nice and neat. So here's what you do. Once you get your video all edited, so this project right here is edited in landscape 16 by nine, Check this out. You go up here, you right click, and now you've got duplicate project as, click here, and you've got these options right here. Scroll down, click vertical, but here's where it gets even better. You wanna click smart conform and watch this. It analyzes it and what it's doing is by clicking smart conform, it's actually analyzing all the clips in that video to make them fit perfectly vertically. Then you click on it and look at this. There's that same video. Here's the original and here's the new one, vertical. Look at this and it fits perfectly. And even where I adjusted my shots in there, this is like crazy cool, look at this. Oh, this is something new. Isn't that the coolest thing ever?
This is my favorite tip, so I'm gonna start with it. But let's say you're deep into an edit and you wanna sample a different song with a section of footage. So you go over, download a new song, you drop it into your edit, and instead of just manually trying to match the keyframes of the song below it, is press Command-C on the original track, and then Command-Shift-V on the new song, and then make sure you click Maintain on the keyframe timing, and that will automatically transfer over the timing of the original keyframes onto your new song. Then you can use your shortcut to disable the original song and just listen to the new one. Even doing You can cycle back and forth. The high line's like his own personal playground. This is a really quick way for just getting the vibe of a new song before you then commit to it and then cut all your footage down to match it perfectly. Sometimes different tracks will be louder, so you can select the whole thing and use a keyboard shortcut to raise or lower the gain. You can also use the range tool to select a specific part of the song and raise and lower it. And this also works really well with interview sound. So if you wanna raise and lower a specific section of the interview, instead of creating individual keyframes, just use the range tool. It creates the keyframes for you and then you can move them however you please. Q, W, and, and E keys. These are used to connect, insert, and append edit clips from your browser to the timeline. Q to connect edit, W to insert edit, and E to append edit to the end of your timeline. I got the dreaded freeze frame effect, but I cheated a little bit. How drop zones work in Final Cut Pro is whatever frame you choose up here when you're scrubbing through your media, that frame is going to sync up with the very first frame of your template or your transition or your plugin, your effect. And I cheated and I clicked way down here on the end. Some of y'all might have noticed that, um, which chose one of the very last frames which synced up with the very beginning of the template here. And it didn't have much media, so it might play a few frames there. But then when you run out of media in a drop zone, Final Cut goes ahead and freezes the last frame of your media. So anytime you see a freeze frame in a drop zone, it's the last frame of that media you chose. And so you need to choose a spot earlier in the media, or you need to use a compound clip. We'll cover that in just a minute. So for this transition, we're just going to reselect that drop zone over here. Go back and choose a point earlier. I see she's clicking on the shutter, so... So I'm going to click on a frame right before she clicks the shutter, and that's going to sync up with the very... I'm going to click Apply Clip here. And that frame's going to sync up with the very beginning of our transition. So when we play this back, she slides in, clicks the shutter, slides out, transitions over. Perfect. Drop zones can be so frustrating, but that tip is extremely helpful. Thanks, Brett. All right, my turn. Final Cut Pro comes with a ton of built-in titles, effects, and transitions. And I want to show you one that not a lot of people know about, but is very powerful. It's in the Titles browser, and you can get there by clicking on this button right here at the top, and then go down to the Social section. It has these cool animations in here. You can preview them by skimming over them to see what they look like. Check out this little lower third. It's really simple, but it's cool looking. Let's add it to the timeline and let's customize it. I'll select it and I'll click on the text. I'll double click on it and let's change it to my name. You'll notice that the box adjusts to fit whatever text is in there. I can go to the inspector by clicking this button up here and I can change the color. Let's try this purple gradient right here. All right, and let's make it a little bit bigger. Perfect. And just like that, I have a good looking lower third that animates and it looks professional. Now I've got a little surprise for you. I have some free plugins that you'll love. Let's take a look at one of them. It's a pack of these little social media callouts. Let's try this YouTube one. Add it to my timeline, and then I'll press Control D to change the timing. Well, let's go five seconds. And then so I can select it, and I can use these on-screen controls to move it around. And then I can change my name if I want, or my handle. And in the inspector, I can even change a lot of stuff like these colors, and layouts, and animations. Let's see what it looks like. Nice. So I've got a pack of these free plugins for you. It's this and a lot more. It's about 90 different templates. It's worth $138, but 
but I want to give it to you for free because you're so awesome. So just click the link below in the description to get your free gift. Happy editing.